Howdy, and welcome to Broken Tool Garage. This video is going to go over me building my own flow bench. This is the uh, second video of this little series. The other video went through just building all the hard components of it. Now I'm going through and fixing leaks and refining it. I'm starting to get data. It's a good data. Uh, different things like that to refine this so I can get this actually as a tool that I can use, right? So the point of this is something that's going to help me port cylinder heads and bring myself to the next level instead of just doing a quick little cleanup thing on it and gasket match, all your little basic things. This is going to help me actually go in and start doing more of a professional job on the cylinder heads. That's the idea. I'm not building this so I can go into testing cylinder heads and, and giving flow numbers for people as a business. That's, that's not the idea here. I just need something that can tell me, did what I do, did, did what I do, that can tell me the modification I made, did it improve flow or not improve flow? That's what I'm looking for there. And then I can have a before and uh, after thing of this is generally what it should be. And then if I really want the flow numbers, I can go send it off to get flow tested on a professional bench. That's what this is going to be doing for me now. So let's get into setting this thing up and refining it. Okay, so we got pretty much all the leaks out. I, I do have one leak I can't uh, do anything about, and that's the motor is an open motor. So the the fan in there it's it's pulling air across the motor so even if i close everything off it's still sucking air across that motor to keep it cool so i can't do anything about that but as far as the rig i'm set up good so maybe that's why the shop back method's better because it probably has an enclosed motor in it right okay so here's what i got set up to adjust the valve up and down so this is exactly the same thing as if you got a stud mount uh system and you go to tighten it, right? So zero lash. Oop, right. I don't know how many times I've done that. And you see how that man one turn really cranked that thing down. So that's a coarse thread on there. And so one, you know, one turn of that would be like, you know, two, two or so turns <laughs> on your fine thread, right? So I can adjust that down, and right now I don't have the dial indicator on. I just have my uh, calipers, digital calipers zeroed out, and then I just you know check it all the way up at the top, and then as I go down, I just keep checking it, just as a rough guessment. I'm still working on this. Uh, I'm hoping I can get this working good. I just spent a whole bunch of time chasing my tail over my pitot tube here. This is the velocity one that points up it gets turned and these are very very sensitive to if it turns you're not getting all your velocity and if it gets turned too much you just you end up getting the exact same thing as the uh, static probe that and my little hoogie thing here i'm learning how to use this it's a bit of a pain it well they're not designed to do this so uh it's a bit of a pain so it's a learning curve going on there what i'm trying to get to is I don't necessarily want to try to get um, so I'm not going for something that repeats what a very expensive professional flow bench does not what I'm trying to do what I'm trying to do is get something that gives me some flow numbers that is repeatable and consistent so that when I go through and port something, well, first off, I can go in and figure out where I need to port it, then go in and do the modification, and then check it to see if I had an improvement. This ain't there yet. Right now, it's kind of cool because it sucks air through it. The biggest problem I'm having right now is my measurements is trying to get the, the data that I'm measuring uh, to be consistent. Like I said, with that uh, probe in there it has to be right and the measuring device has to be right um i don't, know. I don't think on that I, i've been messing with it for a pretty good amount of time here probably at, at least a good hour just messing around and i know 
This cylinder head is a 596 casting 360 four barrel head. Well, 360 head. They didn't make two barrel 360 heads. Um, so I know what the flow number is supposed to be, and I'm bouncing my numbers against it, and that's what I'm trying to do there is, is see it's not going to be exact because I'm not pulling the same amount of vacuum. And that's the other thing that's being a variable there is this thing sucking as hard as it can suck. And the, my depression keeps changing, so I'm not checking out a consistent depression each time either. And that's, I think that's hurting me right there too, because at the low lift, it has more suction on it. And one of the reasons is it's, it can just suck air past the motor to cool the motor off. And as soon as I put, you know, more uh, pressure on it or whatever. So anyways, I'm tired. Oh, this is now blue and two pieces because that, that first piece I had it, I designed it just real thin and everything just to kind of see where I'm going to be at and where I want to mount everything. Um, so this is the heavier duty pieces in here and it has the pre-made holes in there for the uh, pedo tips and grommets. So if we look this one right here, let me get a pointer. This one is gathering my total pressure, right? It's pointed up. It was actually over in here by the wall, and I'm thinking there's like a vortex going on, and it just wasn't getting a good signal. So I'm going to have to play with that and see where that location is. It wasn't turned, um, but I don't think it was getting a good signal. Whereas the other one, it really doesn't matter. You know, it's kind of in the middle ish So that's one of the things I'm going to have to fiddle with to try to figure out where those need to be and then get those. They're, they're locked in pretty good, so that's not a big deal ceiling you can see the impression on here boy that thing was stamped in good screen dim so i can't tell what you're seeing you can see yeah through there so i think i got good ceiling on that as well so i want to come up and uh, ah, it's time for me to go get something to drink and get something to eat Whew. been at it trying to figure this out but that's what this is you know, doing stuff like this is, it's a lot of iterations and troubleshooting. I don't know if this is going to work or not. It should work, but sh should's a dangerous word. So, uh, that's the fun in this and sometimes the aggravation of why isn't it measuring flow? Oh, because there's, you know, turbulence and all that. Not Everything's not exact textbook on how things go the other. It's not even flow throughout there. And that's the point about porting cylinder heads is that port, it's not even flow through that port. So that's where you got to figure out where does it need to be worked. Anyways, I'm going to go get something to eat and relax. I don't know if I'll be back out in a shop today or not, but I, I probably will be entering eat and come back and tinker with this some more. I finally got beautiful weather, got out of the little ice age. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it while we got it before it turns the other direction and goes to the Sahara. All right, got a good night's rest. Got me some coffee next morning. Beautiful. Almost don't need the the hoodie and and beanie, but it's it, it's warm enough. Birds are out. There's none of that four letter S word out, or even three letter I word out. Okay, let's go over something. One of the things I think is going on is I'm trying to measure this digitally instead of measuring it. Uh, with analog. So typically this pitot tube thing is done with a U-tube manometer and it's just a U-tube of clear tubing with a fluid in it, you know, water. Uh, and you, whenever it has a measurement, like a tape measure or something in it, and wherever you pull pressure on one or add pressure or vacuum, it moves that water column up and down. Cause that's what I'm measuring is you know, like typically these are measured at 28 inches of water column. That means that the water has moved up 28 inches, right? So what I'm trying to do here is I have my two pedos and I'm trying to see what the water column difference is. And it's such a fine measurement. What I'm getting with a digital manometer is it's, it's picking up spikes on this end and spikes on this end. And I'm trying to measure, measure that much. 
one of the reasons that happens is whenever the any kind of a pump you got some sort of blade or vein or something so whenever that vein comes around you get a pressure spike and then you get a pressure drop and then the next one comes around pressure spike pressure drop and that's what i'm seeing right there there's no dampening in this uh digital manometer that i have because it's not made to do this you're, you're not going to see those kinds of spikes uh, so having a dampening in there that's what i'd need so kind of a more expensive uh, setup there the other thing, if I have the fluid in there, it does dampening because you actually have to move the fluid for each one of those little micro movements in there. So you, I think that's going to give me a, a lot better measurement right there. So I'm going to go make one of those and hook it up to this and see if I still get that the crazy spikes and all that stuff in there. All right, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what you saw there, one-tenth of an inch in water column is basically the difference between a 200,000th lift and 300,000th lift. That's a huge range, and you saw it bouncing way more than one-tenth one of an inch of water column. So that's the accuracy I'm trying to get. That's why I need to have the dampening in there. I, there's no way I'm going to get there with this. However, let me show you something else kind of cool. I have a part that I just lost. Okay, so you've probably seen these if you watch people doing flow testing, right? So this is actually a capillary tube out of a home AC unit, you know, one of the window units. I hauled it off for scrap and I was, you know, pulling all the aluminum and copper out of it and then got rid of the rest of it because it's how you make money on it. So I made one of these and I have my little tube right there. So what we can do is I can take this and do airspeed measurements all along in here and get all in there, right? And, and check where the air is going. And that actually does work. I did try that out. So that meter does really good for that. Because I'm not going for a specific number in there. I'm going for generally, is it 0.5 or is it 0.6 or, or whatever? And there's a big enough difference in here so I can tell that. So I can use the digital for that. That'll be real nice. But uh, I'm gonna try that, um, I'm gonna try that manometer and give that a whirl and see if that fixes my issue so I'll actually use my pitot tubes in there and get a flow measurement. All right, that was some refinement done on there. I'm not gonna be porting that head, at least not right now. That's the 360 head. That's not what's going on this project. I need to go get the heads I'm gonna be porting. Uh, they're actually off my 90 Model 318. They're stock, they never, as far as I know, they've never been uh, sent to the machine shop or anything. So I'm gonna get those in, get those to the machine shop, get those clean, but that's a next evolution. So I think I'm gonna close this one out with the refinements on there. I'm pretty happy where I'm at. I'm gonna buy that manometer for $9 and uh, we'll hook that up. I think that's gonna get me where I wanna go. So if it looks like it was a dampening issue going on there and that should get me something consistent so not saying it's going to be equal to the 28 inches professional that was never the whole idea on this anyway but pretty happy with that that's the next step on that i'll get those heads and start working on heads and start putting them on here and do some uh tests that's the next thing on the flow bench and meanwhile i need to be focused on getting this truck on the park get the engine out get the hood off get the fenders off blow all the front end apart store engines all that good stuff that's next yeah, the hoodie and beanie's gone because it's beautiful outside now. All right, appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time on Broken Tool Garage.